Former South African President Jacob Zuma has continued his efforts to avoid imprisonment. His lawyers have urged a high court to stop an arrest order made last week by the country's highest court, the Constitutional Court. According to the order, the police must arrest Zuma by midnight on Wednesday after he was sentenced last week to 15 months in prison for contempt of court. Zuma's lawyers argue that the court should stop the police from arresting him until the Constitutional Court rules on his application to rescind the sentence, which will be heard this month. Well, joining us on the news tonight is a senior analyst with the Southern African Times, Farai Moviti. Hello, Farai. How are you? Farai, please unmute your mic so we can hear you. Oh, great. You. Uh, oh, sorry, thank you for having me. I'm great. Thank How you. are you? Thank you so much. Uh, you can hear me now? Yes, I can. How are you? Uh, apologies. Within the era of Zooms, sometimes we may not zoom in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. That's understandable. It's good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Well, it's <clears> about an hour to midnight. What do you foresee happening? Well, I think uh, the South African scenario, in as far as uh, Jacob Zuma is concerned, uh, uh, you articulated the matters relating to his legal issues. Um, I suppose in the context of that uh, background, uh, what we may see is uh, today a judgment by the High Court to contest uh, uh, Zuma's lawyers uh, uh, launched a case with the High Court uh, asking for the uh, issue relating to the Constitutional Court to be rescinded. What we, uh, the Court has reserved judgment till Friday. What, there are two arguments from the South African legal opinion. Uh, uh, what they are suggesting is that uh, either the Constitutional Order, the Constitutional Court's order will remain uh, in order to, in order for the police to fulfil it by end of day tomorrow. But equally, the other side of the argument is that well, the police have written a letter to the Constitutional Court requiring a stay of that particular judgment, awaiting the judgment of the High Court itself. But equally, uh, that said, the Constitutional Court on Saturday accepted to hear the argument from Jacob Zuma's lawyers. So we may not see an arrest in as much as there's enthusiasm to see it. There are two fundamental aspects at play here. There's the question of national security on the basis of how it has caused unrest within the country after the judgment had been passed. But equally, there's a question of justice. So it's yet to be seen what the outcome will become. Okay, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, well, our continent is one of strong men who circumvent laws. Give us a sense of how that happens in South Africa. What's the situation in South Africa? Well, you, you start your question by making a piece of position of which uh, one is to assume that I meant to support. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I think that our, our, our continent has multiple democracies and they should not be seen as a monolith. So what happens perhaps in Nigeria or what happens perhaps in Malawi will not be simultaneous to the, the context and material realities that occur in, in South Africa. But to answer your question directly, I suppose, within, within uh, removing the presuppositions, one looks at uh, South Africa as um, within, with, through, through the lens of the parties and issues that are happening. What was meant to be an ANC issue in relation to its own internal divisions has become a national issue. And perhaps it's inherent to a degree with the liberation uh, movements within the frontline states of Southern Africa. But it is not to be misread as, uh, as, as an issue beyond uh, the, the uh, legalities that we have highlighted. We have here uh, a, a former president accused of corruption that has not yet been proven in a court law, in a court of law, the uh, the legality the, the legal process is undergoing, and uh, bearing in mind that this particular contempt of court was not in relation to any of his ongoing cases, but in in relation to <clears throat> the issues pertaining to contempt of not going to the commission. So in South Africa, there are two arguments at play. One argument suggests that perhaps Zuma is utilizing delay tactics, leveraging his own support base in, to ensure that he sees 
uh, a, 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 a different legal outcome by applying pressure to the authorities. The other, uh, the other argument, however, is that perhaps the Constitutional Court is being used to, uh, uh, to subvert justice on his behalf. And that is his argument. But this is neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. I think the fundamental issues here are relate to an internal political dynamic that simply needs to, uh, to be looked at in isolation. In as far as the legal process, um, uh, based on past judgments so far, uh, there is precedence to the arguments on both sides. It's, I suppose, with these unique circumstances, it's going to be quite enthusiastic. To, I, I, I rather, I, well, what I mean to say is I, I'm, I'm enthusiastically waiting to see what the outcome sh should be. Okay, well, while we wait for what the outcome would be, um, let's guess, what, would an imp what, what impact would an imprisonment of a former president make in South Africa? <laughs> Well, I think um, in, in Southern Africa, we have a precedence uh, within the case of uh, Kaunda um, uh, during the time of the leadership of uh, Chiluba. And um, it, had re it, it had a regional response uh, and it had a continental response. Um, uh, but in the context of uh, Zuma, my, my submission would be that um, this may, if we're judging it on the basis of what happened in Kangila on Saturday, where Zuma's village is, the uh, potential for national disturbance, uh, but equally seen in Durban, in, in East, Eastern Pretoria, Limpopo, and, uh, and other regions within the country, and other cities within the country, it has potential to, to destabilize the country. So I suppose to borrow a thought from a legal mind from South Africa that suggests that there is going to be a distinction here that the president would need to make, which is, is it going to be national building or the pursuit of justice? However, in the pursuit of justice, one has to read it as, as, a, as a case that is quite unique uh, because South Africa does not have a precedence of a former president uh, being jailed. In fact, in, uh, the other argument is that in similar circumstances, uh, when it came to a commission of inquiry mm. relating to apartheid, uh, former apartheid leaders simply who have refused to attend that commission got a slap on the wrist by virtue of having, having to just pay a fine. So this sentence is being read through that lens to, in, in other quarters. But there is also another quarter that sees this as just a principle to strengthen the constitution uh, of, of South Africa by setting an example for all future heads of, heads of state post-democracy, post, -democracy, post a, an apartheid government, to ensure that they preserve the integrity of the institution of government and equally preserve the integrity of their party, in this case, the ANC. So there are two arguments in that regard. I suppose to conclude, I, I would say, uh, in order to answer your question, the assumption would be that there is going to be, there is going to be need to marry two realities, and uh, I do not envy President Ramaphosa. Mm. Well, thank you, Farai Movuti. I wish we could go on with this discussion, but time would not allow us. Um, Farai Movuti is a senior analyst with the Southern African Times. Uh, thank you so much again. Thank you for having me. Have a good night. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.